Bancroft and Eckersley fight back for Durham after early Jordan Blitz. It was overcast with a risk of showers down at Hove as Sussex entertained Durham. The home team were looking to build on their two wins so far this season and try and overhaul second place Glamorgan in the process, whilst Durham were looking for their second win of the month after being victorious at home against Derbyshire just under three weeks ago. Durham won the toss and elected to bat, and after a slightly delayed start, the players managed to get out into the middle to get the match underway. It was an excellent start for Sussex and in particular Chris Jordan as Finch took a fine catch at cover to dismiss Lees for a duck. However, it wasn't long before play was suspended again, the covers coming on and an early lunch was taken with the visitors 12 for 1. When they resumed, Bancroft and Hart looked to start again and they managed a few boundaries. Things were looking good for the visitors until Hart spooned one up in the air to extra cover. Van Zyl with the catch off Thomason, a maiden first-class wicket for the 21-year-old. Burnham was the new man in. He and Bancroft looked to move the total into three figures, but Burnham became Jordan's second victim when he nicked off to the England man for 13. One over later, Jordan put the home side firmly on top. His opening delivery removed Clark, caught Evans for a duck, and three balls later, Dravaskis was back in the pavilion for the same score, this time out LBW. Bancroft and Eckersley steadied proceedings and they managed to get through to T for no further loss. The score at the break, 117 for 5, and with the weather cleared, an undisturbed evening session lay ahead. The first boundary after T took Bancroft to 50 for the second time this season. And then the Australian smashed Wells for six to take the score to 200. Jordan, Beer and Rawlings managed to slow things up in the run into stumps, but the Durham batsmen were quite content with just rotating the strike. At the close, they'd reached 259 for five. From 90 for five, some inspired underpinning from the skipper and Ned Eckersley, both unbeaten on season's best scores of 120 and 70 thus far. Jordan did the damage early on. He's still waiting for his fifth wicket of the innings, though, after that early blitz. Sussex will look to get in amongst the wickets early on day two as they try and halt the impressive Durham fight back. Rawlins and Visa counter-attack after Cass puts Durham on top at Hove. Early wickets from Chris Jordan had given Sussex an exceptional start against Durham at Hove on day one, but from 90 for five, the visitors had fought back through skipper Cameron Bancroft and Ned Eckersley. They closed on 259 for five, with Bancroft unbeaten on 120, Eckersley 70 not out. Bancroft started the second morning as he concluded the first, striking Jordan for four in the second over of the day. Eckersley was first to fall, caught and bowled by Wells for 118, closing his partnership with Bancroft on 282. Three balls later, Bancroft was gone too, LBW Rawlins for 158. Rain struck a couple of fours before falling LBW to the same bowler for nine. And the last couple of wickets came in quick succession as Cass was caught by Jordan off Rawlings for two. And Whale was the last man out three balls later, Beer the bowler, Brown with the catch behind the stumps. 384 all out, a rapid demise once Eckersley and Bancroft departed, but from 90 for five, a really good recovery for the visitors. Lunch was taken with the Sussex reply due to start in the afternoon session. Chris Rushworth bowled the first over and he had success on the fourth ball of the innings as Wells was caught out by Lees for two. Two for one became two for two when Cass struck in the fourth over, Beer LBW for a duck. And there was another scoreless batsman moments later as Finch was LBW to Rushworth. Van Zyl tried to lead a response hitting the first boundary of the innings off Rushworth and he and Evans put together a stand that moved the total towards 50. However, just shy of their half-century partnership, Whale was introduced into the attack and he had Evans caught behind for 20. Brown joined Van Zyl and they once again started to pull the visitors back into the contest. It looked as though they'd survive through to T, only for Van Zyl to fall in the penultimate over before the interval, bowled by Hart 
for 34. The score at the tee interval, 96 for 5. After the break, Carr struck again, Rushworth with the catch as Brown went for 26. Visa was joined by Jordan, but CJ only lasted a handful of balls before being caught out by Bancroft off cast for six. 110 for seven, Sussex were in real trouble, but Visa went on the counter-attack. He cracked Kars and Travaskis to the boundary, the latter for a maximum. Rawlins kept him company, and the pair soon had racked up a 50 partnership. Rawlins struck Rain for six, and the pair brought up their century stand. But Traga but Travaskis then made the breakthrough as he trapped Visa LBW for 56. Cast then dismissed Thomason for three, Lees with the catch. But Sussex then limped to the close, nine down, with Rawlins and Robinson at the crease. 231 for nine the score, Sussex still needing three to avoid the follow-on. It'll be a tense start to the action in Hove on day three. Lees puts Durham in the driving seat, heading into the final day at Hove. Durham had finished day two in Hove in complete control. They required just one more wicket to wrap up the Sussex innings, and knew, barring an epic final partnership, they'd start their second innings with a three-figure lead. The goal for the home side was to avoid the follow-on, a feat that became impossible with just the second ball of the morning innings. Kaas bowled Rawlings for 56 to bring the Sussex innings to a close and to pick up a maiden first-class fifer. His figures of 5 for 43 will live long in the memory, a real statement from a cricketer with huge potential. The Sussex card made difficult reading for the South Coast side. Three failures at the top of the order had made their task difficult, any embarrassment avoided by another rearguard retaliation. Rawlins with just his third first-class 50 to add to his bowling figures of 3 for 19. Durham would decide not to enforce the follow-on though and instead look to put Sussex under pressure with the bat, their lead already 152. But their second innings didn't get the best of starts. Bancroft, who'd played so well for his first innings 100, wouldn't repeat that feat. He fell in just the third over of the day, Robinson finding an edge through to Finch an encouraging start for the home side, but any hope inspired by that early wicket would be short-lived. Lees, now joined by Hart, would begin to punish the Sussex bowlers. Jordan hit for three consecutive boundaries as the lead passed 200. The pair would continue to bat without any real scares, going into the lunch break at 100 for one. Their lead now 252. The interval would only provide brief respite for Sussex. Lees and Hart picking up where they left off at the restart. Durham's lead grew. Before long, the pair had increased their side's advantage to 300 runs and showed no signs of letting up. A four off the bowling of Rawlings would take Lees to his second century in three games. But fellow spinner Wells would finally pick up the second wicket, Rawlings holding on at short cover to see Hart removed for 77. The partnership worth a mammoth 220 runs. The pair then guided the side through to tee with 258 runs on the board and a lead of 410. A Durham declaration looked likely, but with Lees on 138, there was the temptation to pile on the runs and give the opener a chance of reaching 150. Durham did elect to bat on after the interval. Lees given that opportunity to pick up a score of 150, but he wouldn't take the chance. His mammoth innings brought to an end as he was caught behind for 143 off beer. And 11 balls later, Durham finally did declare on 284 for three. The lead, 436, with 30 overs left to bowl in the day. Without a run on the board, they lost opener Luke Wells, out for a duck, edging Rushworth to burn him in the slips. But as soon as they got runs on the board, another wicket fell. Finch caught and bowled by Rushworth, another man gone without scoring, and the Durham bowler with his 450th first-class wicket. Sussex didn't need another invitation to shut up shop. All attacking shots were put away as survival became the priority for Beer and Van Zyl. The run rate dried up with four consecutive maiden overs from the Durham bowlers. Beer pushed on, taking the Sussex total past 50 with consecutive fours off Travaskis. Rushworth, though, would put a stop to this late flurry as he trapped Beer LBW for 36. Van Zyl and night watchman Ollie Robinson would survive the final six balls of the day unscathed, but at 59 for three, they have a mammoth task ahead of them. 
still 378 runs behind with only seven wickets remaining. It's going to be a real battle for the home team to avoid defeat on the final day. Brains takes six as Durham achieved dominant win over Sussex in Hove. Day three had seen Durham, and Lees in particular, bat their way into a commanding position in Hove. Any thoughts of a positive result for the home side had surely been banished, barring a Herculean batting effort on day four. They'd already been hamstrung by three wickets in the final session of play, the dismissal of beer in the final ball of the day's penultimate over, a bitter pill to swallow. Stian uh, Van Zyl and night knows. watchman Ollie Robinson would resume with the, the side on 59 for away, three, and the morning would provide a much needed boost of confidence as the pair relished batting in the Hove sunshine. James Whale would be the bowler to suffer, both batsmen carting for four and taking Sussex to 100. Both were closing in on half centuries, but Van Zyl would fall agonisingly short, caught behind off Ben Rain for 48. The wicket signalled lunch. is caught behind and the innings comes to an end. Well, you said they Dave well Towns. just one wicket in the first session, and any designs on salvaging a draw from the game depended on the Sussex Order's resilience and their ability to see out the remaining day's play. Rain will Those now hopes would take a severe blow at the resumption. Before New man lunch. Laurie Evans becoming Rain's oh, second scout in two first balls. Ball. Has he the repealing for a, a catch behind? It's not. He'd miss out on the hat trick, but wasn't the done there. Bowling. Two ben Brown, Brown he's appealing. He's going. Later. That is a big wicket from a thorough point of view. And a fourth wicket would follow five today, balls later. Bowls. And Visa's Visa pinned in front, and there goes another wicket. That did keep low. Innings. And David Visa, here it's on his. Carson's going to continue around the muscles. wicket from the Cromwell Road end. The balls to Robinson, who's down that one away nicely through to the midwicket. The first ball. class 50, but the, the new ball would quash his many rebellion. And he's caught, he's Ollie Robinson. That is an absolute belter by Jack Burnham. Third slip. That in reply to India's 200 and 68. Tea on 215 for eight. Two wickets, all that was left standing between defeat and an unlikely draw. But Chris Jordan yeah, has never goes, been uh, one to shy away from a challenge. A four off range, taking that, him to within one, one shot of his uh, feet. a very fine young bat to be with normally that four or five. As in comes Rain and Bowles. And Jordan's caught behind! With one wicket left in hand, Rawlings comes. freed his arms. Travaskis again, and that's off mold away. A rebellious reply to losing his ninth wicket goes, partner. Uh, it wouldn't be long before the innings was over. He drives at that. Final and boundary from Thomason he before comes. he became Down the unfortunate last Thomason. man out. Caught nice by pound. skipper Bancroft, Sussex comes all out for Rain. 240. Thomason edges and he's gone! Defeat caught chin high! Rain had been the pick of the bowlers. His figures of 6 for 27, a career best, sealed in an impressive spell that had broken the home side's fourth day resistance. It had been a tough day at the office for Sussex's batsmen, relying on scores from Robinson and Jordan to get them close, while Rawlins' first innings performance with both bat and ball had been their major highlight. Defeat is a major blow for Sussex's promotion hopes, while the win gives Durham a massive boost at the bottom of the Division 2 table, just their second success of the campaign.